Well, hello there, and welcome to this episode of The Terry Cole Show. I want to start with a question. Do you like New Year's resolutions? Do you think they work? Have you ever been profoundly successful at setting New Year's resolutions and actually keeping them past February 15th? Anybody? Well, if you're shaking your head no, then this episode is for you. Because today I'm going to be going over my annual ritual asking you the question, what crap are you leaving in 2022? So that is what the ritual is about. I'm going to walk you through it during this episode and you will have the downloadable guide at terrycole.com forward slash guide where you can walk yourself through this beautiful ritual that is not New Year's resolutions. So before we get started, if you happen to be new to this channel, say hello, introduce yourself in the comments because we are a friendly group. Also, make sure that you don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified everything. We roll out something new, which is every Tuesday and Thursday. And hey, I wouldn't want you to miss a thing because you're the reason I do all the things that I do. If you happen to be new to this YouTube channel, my name is Terry Cole. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, a relationship expert, and the author of Boundary Boss right there, which you can get at boundarybossbook.com. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all your questions and your comments and supporting each other and just being so active in this channel. I love it. I love all your comments. I read everything and I love to highlight them. So today, I'm highlighting a comment from Curiosity is the name of the person. And it's under the episode setting boundaries with someone who's defensive. And Curiosity said, I love how you explained it. Thank you so much. Very informative without so much jargon. <laughs> Thank you. Well, yes, I'm trying to be jargon free here, Curiosity. Anyway, thank you so much for your comment. I appreciate it and I appreciate you. So now let's move into today's content. So let me ask you, what crap are you leaving in 2022? All right, we'll get there. I might be jumping the gun right now. The real thing is thinking about why New Year's resolutions don't work, right? Did you know that studies show that only 8% of the people who make New Year's resolutions actually keep those New Year's resolution? So nearly 80% fail by February. So those aren't great odds, hence why I never like them and don't do them myself. And the question is, why is it so hard to follow through on New Year's resolutions, even though we want to, right? But my thought from a therapeutic perspective is that resolution setting is missing a really important piece, which is honest self-reflection. We can't just create goals out of nowhere, right? And not look at why either we haven't achieved that thing already or why we want it now or what was getting in the way of us achieving it. We need to look at what's working and what's not in our lives, the way we're doing things, right? So assessing, looking for evidence of what is working and what isn't working, that sets us up for success, right? So it's clarity, of what has been going on. We're not creating this based on a wish, based on something else. We're creating it based on kind of facts. So anyway, I'm offering this therapeutically based process to help you unpack your 2022, honor your experiences, understand your own growth so that you can get clear on the changes that you wanna make and set yourself up for success to make them. It is without a doubt, my favorite ritual to start any new year feeling energized, clear, and ready to take on 2023. Remember, throughout this, all you need to do to get your own is go to terrycole.com forward slash guide. And the step-by-step, -step, it's a multiple page thing. It's a little bigger than it normally is because we have multiple steps. So I'm going to invite you to make a date with yourself. Actually put it in your calendar. This is sacred space for you to really calibrate the way that you want to go into 2023. So you're going to set the scene for your ritual, snuggle up in your Zen den, as I would call it, light some candles, get your journal, maybe get some essential oil, maybe have some kind of a cozy blanket, 
a cup of tea if you like, some soothing music if that inspires you. So the first thing we're going to do, and this is something that I actually added last year, is that we're going to identify the peak experiences of 2022. So those could be peak experiences amazing, peak experiences painful. They're the most impactful moments of your year. So in all of your experiences, this year I was gone for almost three weeks after not traveling for almost three years. I went to LA, I did a bunch of meetups with people in our crew, I did a bunch of interviews, saw friends, then I went to Miraval Spa in Arizona as a guest because they were reading Boundary Boss. You know, that was a whole thing. So to unpack that, I have to honestly look at what was amazing about it, what was not as amazing, what would I do differently next time, what would I keep the same, but it's allowing ourselves to reflect and what we experience because so much of the time, it's like we get up, as my friend David G would say, burn through the day, drop at night and get up and do it all over again, but not really thinking about what we're doing, how we feel about it, right? What did you feel great about? What, was, what surprised you about those peak experiences? What were your big aha Moments, how did you feel about them? What would you have done differently? So don't worry, I'm prompting you in the downloadable guide, terrycole.com forward slash guide to answer all of those questions. But I really want you to remember to be kind to yourself because it's very tempting, especially if you have perfectionistic tendencies, to sort of focus on what you could have done better. But that's not really what it's about. It really is about self-understanding. It's certainly not focusing on what didn't go right, it's acknowledging what went right, what didn't go right, how you feel about it. This whole process is being honest. That's why though, since we do have this natural inclination to lean towards the negative, especially when it comes to ourselves, the second part of this process is to brag about the things that you are really proud of. Those peak experiences that you did the heavy lift and that you feel good about and to really celebrate because that's another thing we literally don't do, most of us, throughout the year. Again, I just have to get through this project, and then the next project, and then the next project, the next experience. But are you stopping and slowing down enough to celebrate your hard work, the things that you did right, the things that you survived? And it doesn't even have to be accomplishment, quote-unquote, oriented. And I don't necessarily want it to be for you. Listen, we all survived a lot of stuff in the past two and a half years. Surviving is something to brag about. Getting up and continuing to do the things we need to do day to day, that can be something to actually truly celebrate. Your resiliency, your strength, the fact that you're still here, the fact that you're listening or watching this on YouTube right now because you want to create a better life for yourself, a better internal experience for yourself because you're committed to growth, because you're committed to your own evolution, all of those things are things to celebrate. So you're going to look for all of those that happened throughout 2022. And really, what are your proudest moments, right? That is an important thing. And then the next thing we're going to move into in our ritual is what is the crap that you really are committed to leaving in 2022, right? It's time to get honest and discerning about what you do not want. And that could be experiences, people, feelings, circumstances, and situations that you want to release. So I'll be giving you all the different categories to consider in the guide of all the crap you just don't want to carry with you anymore. We have to make an intentional effort, commitment, acknowledgement. It's almost like putting your stake in the ground, putting the universe on notice that something is going to change. And I think that that's a really important part of this process, slowing down long enough to go, okay, this stuff sucked. Like, I do not want to do this anymore. But then one of the most crucial parts of this entire experience is looking for the gems in the crap. Because even if there's crap that you don't want to bring with you, and you're not going to into 2023, we have to be able to see what we learned and keep in mind, this is not any kind of emotional bypassing. I'm not being like a wacko silver lining detective where like we have to find the good. It's not that. 
It's really not that. From a psychological point of view, all of the experiences that we have in our lives teach us something. We learn something about ourselves. We learn something about other people, but that's really important. And those are what I call the gems from the crap. So every crappy situation or every crap stew, as I like to say, has gems within it. But you've got to be willing to roll up your sleeves, get your hands dirty to find those gems of wisdom because this accelerates your growth. It also helps us not repeat stuff. There's this great quote, Christine Langley Obao says, we repeat what we do not repair, right? And Freud would refer to this as repetition compulsion. So without therapeutic intervention, it's almost like we will repeat similar painful experiences because we're seeking a different outcome. At least that's my take on it, right? There's a part of us that's ever hopeful that it will be different. But if we don't learn from the gems, from the crap stew, we're most likely just repeating what we did not repair. So we definitely do not want to do that, even though <laughs> this is what many of us do in life over and over. You know, you can see where you say to yourself, how the hell am I here again in this situation? Whether it's mismanaging finances, whether it's being in relationships with unavailable people, whether it's saying you want to get healthy but not doing it or joining the gym but never going or whatever the thing is for you. And there's no judgment on that. It's just that it requires us to be mindful and to want to change something enough, right? The pain of staying the same starts to outweigh the fear of changing. And I know that's a famous quote by somebody, I don't know, not me, but I think the sentiment is accurate. So I want you to be prepared when you're going through this process to really look at the crappy things. And if you have a tendency because we all do initially, when something doesn't work out the way we want to, a lot of times we're looking to blame others. And even if others act like jerks, and even if others did do something wrong, we still have to look at our 50% of how did we contribute to that thing going down that way. Sometimes our 50% is just staying in a situation that we've long outgrown. And we're just either too loyal or too insecure or too codependent to release ourselves from those situations. But this ritual, the crap you're leaving in 2022 ritual, is going to give you an opportunity. And I want to invite you to luxuriate in this opportunity. This is not something you must do, obviously, but it is something that you get to do. And I've been doing it every year for many years, many, many years, almost two decades probably. And I look forward to it every single year because I find it incredibly revealing for me. And I've had 30 years of therapy of what really went down in 2022. What was great? What do I want to keep doing? I always work on trying not to be a total workaholic, but I feel like I still work too much probably. And I have a tendency to be forward motion, right? Onto the next, onto the next. And I've been working really hard to slow down, to take the weekends off, to celebrate what's right in my life right now. But what I find this, this end of the year wrap up does is in the places where I did not successfully do that throughout the year, I get an opportunity now to do it. And I share this with everyone in my family I share this with all of my friends and I encourage you to do the same thing. A lot of times we'll get together, me and my girlfriends, and we'll do it together as a group, make tea, sit around, light a fire. Like actually getting into it as a group is so fun because if it's people that you're actually close to, there's things you're learning about yourself that you can share. And by no means do you need to do it with a group, obviously. The last piece of this ritual is you really getting into creating your list, your thoughts, your feelings of what you want to happen in 2023. Creating goals, but they're not just goals. As my girlfriend, Danielle Laporte would say, they're goals with soul based on how you want to feel, who you want to be in the world and 
what you want to accomplish, what you want to experience, all of those things in the guide. So just go to terrycole.com forward slash guide and download yours, but you'll have an opportunity to write all of this out. What do you want to create? It's so much fun. Like what would actually thrill you in 2023? Not like what would be okay. How to take impeccable care of your body, your mind, and your spirit. Maybe that's what you want to do in 2023. When you're done with this annual ritual of what crap you're leaving in 2022, you will have processed the good, the bad, the ugly, the gems, and the lessons. And then moving into consciously creating your 2023. And can you see how this would be so much more effective than just making a wish, which is what a New Year's resolution is for me. I'm making a wish and maybe I'll follow through and maybe I won't. When you go through this therapeutically designed process, you're hitting all the things that you need to hit to be in a much better position to be successful in creating the life experience, the relationship experiences, the career and abundance experiences that you want to have in 2023, because you've actually processed what didn't work in 2022. And those are the areas that we're going to focus on. So I love this ritual so very much. And I'm so excited for you to give yourself the gift of going through this therapeutic process for you and creating a reality that will thrill you in 2023. So I can't wait to see what you're creating in 2023. So if you're doing the ritual, please take a picture of what you're doing, your setup, whatever it is, and tag me on Instagram, and I will do the same with mine. So I'm wishing you good luck in doing your annual ritual. Oh man, doesn't it just feel good to think about the crap you want to leave in 2022? I feel lighter already. I hope you guys have an amazing week planning what is going to happen for you in 2023. And as always, take care of you.